Okay, so let's start again. So welcome back. So in fetal gastrointestinal physiology, so what we discussed, so around by week 10 and 12, the fetal starts swallowing the amniotic fluid. Okay, and this is very important for development of lung as well as GI tract. Okay, so fetal swallowing is very, very important. It's, it acts like an induction, okay? So for the formation of lungs as well as GI tract. And by 20 weeks, okay, meconium starts. Okay, so meconium appears in the GI tract. Basically, this is a fetal first stool. Okay, and it contains mainly hepatic secretion. That's why it is black is green in color because of the pigment delivered in. Other content include epithelial cells, okay, exfoliated cells, let go here, okay, which is present in the amniotic fluid, which is swallowed by the fetus, okay, and other include epithelial lining as well as intestinal juice, okay. So this part is important, okay. Always remember when there is meconium in the amniotic liquor, always, always think of fetal distress, okay. So in intrauterine hypoxia. Okay, when there is hypoxia, when there is sort of oxygen in case of fetus, there will be vagal, vagal stim stimulation, that is parasympathetic stimulation. Okay, so vagus nerve is a parasympathetic nerve. Okay, so there will be vagus stimulation and the parasympathetic nerve, what is does to the anal sphincter, it will relax. Okay, and the meconium is in the liquor. Okay, so this is the one of the, uh, this is the one of the common reason, okay. <clears throat> Common reason of um, reason uh, the patient uh, may undergo, undergo caesarean section. Okay, so fetal stress is a very common part, and one other indication is meconium stain liquor. Okay, there are certain other conditions like sometimes uh, post maturity also we can uh, we can see meconium okay in post dated pregnancy or when there is listeria infection as well. But always rule out the fetal distress first. Okay, when there is amniotic fluid stain with the meconium okay so let's discuss about the fetal respiratory system so initially lungs are solid because the all the function of the lung it is done by placenta so placenta is basically fetal lung fetal liver so part of the fetal kidney okay so majority mm -hmm. of the function metabolic function is done by placenta that's why in early stage the lungs are solid so by 28 weeks the alveoli the ex okay the alveoli they expand and it is lined by cubital epithelium. So when first uh, surfactant, uh, surfactant appear, it is by 24 weeks. Okay, so remember by 24 weeks, surfactant occurs. So it is a surface tension reducing agent. So it helps in the alveolus to expand. Okay, and it is related to phospholipids. Okay, phosphatidylcholine, okay, what we call lecithin, and phosphatidylglycerol. Okay. So surfactant, this is very, very important to release, decrease the surface, surface tension and help in expansion of alveoli. Okay. Though there is first appearance at 24 weeks, but as long as up to 34 to 36 weeks, still um, yeah. there is not adequate Okay, before 34 weeks. So before 34 weeks, if we okay, need to deliver the baby, we have to give Okay, some steroid medications, what we call dexamethasone or betamethasone, which helps in formation of, which expedite the formation of surfactant. Okay, so we'll discuss again that. So remember, surfactant, it is secreted by type 2 pneumocytes, okay, type 2 alveolar cells, and it lowers the surface tension so that alveoli can open easily. Okay, so how we confirm the lung is mature by measuring this lecithin and sphingomyelin ratio. Okay, so lecithin, it is a surfactant okay so let's see into sphingomyelin ratio if it's more than two is to one then we call so it signifies the lung is mature <laughs> okay and, and the fetal cortisol okay this is the natural trigger for augmented surfactant synthesis so surfactant synthesis is, it is augmented by fetal cortisol this is point is very very important okay so remember it is the fetal cortisol it helps in augmentation of surfactant synthesis okay that's why if we <clears throat> need to deliver the baby preterm okay sometimes because of the hypertension disorder okay there are certain reasons sometimes we may need to terminate the baby okay sometimes baby the water broke the water may break early okay so in that case we give steroid externally okay like dexamethasone 
बेटा मेथासोन सो बेसिकली दे मिमिक लाइक द फिटल कॉर्टिसोल ओके बेसिकली दीज आर द कॉर्टिकोस्टेरॉइड एंड दे अगेन ट्रिगर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सरफेक्टिन ओके बाय स्टिमुलेटिंग टाइप 2 न्यूमोसाइट्स और टाइप 2 एल्बुलर सेल्स ओके सो दिस इज इंपोर्टेंट प्रैक्टिकली दैट वी कॉमनली डू ओके वी प्रिस्क्राइब डेक्सामेथासोन और बेटा मेथासोन ओके फॉर फिटल लॉन्ग मैच्योरिटी ओके सो वी we are focusing on the surfactant formation okay so type 2 neurocytes and there are certain condition okay like fetal growth restriction prolonged rupture of membrane okay this cause the fetus stress okay when there is stress there is release of fetal cortisol okay and there is and it also help in it accentuate the formation of surfactant okay so when the fetus is in stress it start formation of cortisol and it will again stimulate the type 2 neurocyte for, to form surfactant okay so clinically also we give dexamethasone okay steroid to stimulate the fetal lung especially type 2 neurocyte for the formation of surfactant okay <laughs> let's discuss briefly about fetal endocrinology so when does the anterior hormone they appears so mainly from the by 10 weeks okay so by 10 weeks growth hormone okay adrenocorticotropic hormone prolactin tsh thyroid thyroid stimulating hormone gonadotropins fss ls okay they release in uh, fetal circulation okay and by 12 weeks the vasopressors okay so posterior pituitary okay uh, posterior pituitary uh, the hormone which are synthesized from the hypothalamus and they get collected in the posterior pituitary they are usually seen by 12 weeks okay so first to appear is anterior pituitary or uh, anterior pituitary hormones <laughs> can okay. fetal adrenals hypertroph hypertrophy in the reticular zone okay there is a specific fetal zone which is not seen in the adult okay so spe specific zone there is a fetal zone which is the site of synthesis of estro estradiol precursor cortisol as well as dihydroepinephrine restaurant okay so there is a fetal zone with helps in synthesis of estradiol precursor okay cortisol and dihydroepinephrine restaurant estrogen so these are the estrogen okay so fetal zone is absent in anencephaly so that's why why it is important in case of anencephaly there is no fetal zone no steroid synthesis that's why the labor will be more prolonged okay if the patient come in late so early we used to diagnose if we diagnose early in anencephaly we terminate the patient because this is not compatible with life okay so it may takes time because why because to initiate the labor okay the cortisols okay fetal uh, cortisol these are important in triggering the labor okay so that's why in case of anencephaly there is no fetal zone okay so it can cause to delay okay it takes time <clears throat> and more time need to expulsion of the fetus even if we induce okay so this is the development of the adrenal gland so you can see the medulla is very few okay so in the fifth month of gestation we can see the adrenal cortex this is the adult cortex around 20% on fetal cortex it almost 75% this is the area where it synthesizes the cortisol dihydroepinephrine and estrogen acetate okay and estradiol um, uh, precursor okay so these here the steroid uh, synthesis occurs and it has a role in initiating the labor as well as long synthesis and there are various role okay it's so long especially uh, synthesis of the type 2 neumocyte okay so it, it is augmented by the cortisol okay in newborn so there is oral cortex and there is fetal cortex is almost 50% Okay, and this is the medulla, where adrenaline and noradrenaline, uh, okay, formation occurs and it gets released. Okay, epinephrine and norepinephrine. And you can see in the oral, you com you can compare with oral in oral cortex, almost eighty percent is there is distinct zone, so zona glomerulosa, fasciculosa, and reticularis. Okay, so th these zona reticularis, this is not seen in fetus. Okay, so now you can appreciate. So instead of the zona reticularis, you can appreciate this is the fetal cortex. Okay, it's a distinct and medullized twenty percent. Okay, so that's why the fetal cortex it has a major role in synthesis of cortisol, which has which is very important for formation of um, uh, surfactant. Okay, mainly it augment the type two neumocyte secretion of. surfactant as well as they have role in initiating the labor that's why in case of anencephaly it takes time okay it takes um, the labor initiation is usually 
it's late in compared to other okay who have fetal cortex in adrenal okay now fetal endocrinology uh, to continue so adrenal medulla it is catecholamines okay and fetal thyroid so thyroxine by 12 weeks okay so fetal start uh, thyroxine by 12 weeks so only after the end of the first time it starts secretion of thyroxine that's why mother need to supplement if mother is hypothyroidism okay and fetal ovaries they are inactive what test is they mediate the development of male reproductive structures because the testosterone is essential for development of male reproductive structures and insulin is secreted by almost three weeks sorry three months that is 12 weeks and glucagon by eight weeks okay so now briefly discuss about the fetal circulation i think this is uh, again a revision part for you all so gas actions occurs in the placenta it's not in the lungs in case of fetus as we discussed the lungs are solid okay and by 28 weeks there is formation of alveoli and by 24 weeks surfactant uh, section starts okay but fully mature lung it takes time it's the uh, it is the this is the organ that develop at last in fact you can say in that way okay so even if you want to deliver the patient before 38 weeks and before 37 weeks we may need to give straight to long to augment the uh, surfactant maturation uh, sorry surfactant secretion by type 2 pneumocytes that's why long is the organ to develop at last in case of fetus okay so and its function is done by placenta okay and they are in order it is in comparison with the order circulation they are few shunt okay because the liver is not that active in case of fetus lung is not that active in the fetus that's why they are various shunt okay so in doctor's venosus it shunts the liver because the portal circulation it is the the function of the liver is in fact it is run by the placenta that's why we do not need more blood to the liver that's why there is a shunt doctor's venosus okay and to shunt from the right circulation to okay pulmonary circulation to systemic circulation there is a foramen ovale okay and similarly doctor satiosis okay so we do not need more blood in the pulmonary circulation that's why it is shunted to systemic circulation by doctor satiosis okay so let's see so this is the here is the placenta okay here is the placenta so all the nutrients get accents okay so glucose amino acid oxygen all these are taken by the fetus from the placenta okay it is absorbed okay all <coughs> and umbilical artery remember umbilical artery they carry yes impure blood to the placenta and umbilical vein okay so this this is the umbilical vein okay so this is the umbilical vein so umbilical vein it carries the oxygenated blood remember it's not like the adult okay so i think it's you know uh, this thing in adult we call the vein they carry impure blood and artery they carry pure blood but here in case of you know, umbilical vessels umbilical vein it carries pure blood okay and umbilical artery impure blood and the blood is taken to the heart okay but look first it is taken to the liver as we know liver is not metabolically active that's why there is a shunt okay and this is basically there is a shunt okay and it bypasses the liver then it directly goes to the inferior vena cava okay because we do not need to supply more to the liver and from the heart okay right atrium it goes to left atrium via foramen ovale okay because i think it's what will happen this from the right atrium it will go to left ventricle sorry right uh, uh, ventricle and from right ventricle to the lungs and lungs are solid and then do not need much blood okay so that's why it is shunted through the foramen ovale and it goes to the left ventricle okay and from left ventricle it goes to the systemic circulation okay mainly to the brain okay upper upper part of the body as well as lower part of the body so you can see uh, the most you know oxygenated blood it goes towards the brain upper part of the body and and less uh, and less oxygenated to the other part of the body because the brain is very important for development okay a few you can see here the venous blood okay the blood it comes to the left atrium and some of the also blood from the umbilical vein ultimately 
it goes to the left atrium uh, sorry right atrium and it goes to the left atrium few okay and it get mixed and from the pulmonary trunk okay again it is shunted to to the aorta because lungs they do not need much blood okay so that's why doctor's artesis is another shunt okay so there are three shunt for i mean ovale doctor's artesis and doctor's venosus okay so basically the main aim is to shunt to the area which are less needed in the fetus because as you know liver is not metabolically that active lung are solid okay they do not do exchange okay so that's why all the oxygenated highly oxygenated blood is shunted towards the systemic circulation mainly focusing on the brain okay so by the end of the third month of development all the major vessels they are present and functioning the placenta has the lowest vascular resistance okay and it is it receives 40% of uh, fetal uh, cardiac output and this is very important because when there is increased vascular resistance there will be placental insufficiency which can lead to yes intrauterine growth restriction of the fetus fetus may be small maybe pathologically growth restricted okay so this is important and it receives almost 40% of the fetal cardiac output lungs these are highly high vascular resistance that's why the blood do not go to the lungs because of the high vascular resistance it is solid okay and it contains only 10% of the cardiac output so in umbilical <coughs> circulation so we discuss okay so which it goes uh, to the all the waste particles okay uh, from the fetus it goes via umbilical arteries okay umbilical arteries to the placenta and the oxygenated blood okay food oxygen from the mother okay it goes to the umbilical vein okay and it is shunted uh, in the liver via doctor's venosus it enters the inferior vena cava to the left atrium sorry right atrium it is shunted by foramen ovale okay this is the second shunt okay then some of the blood which enters the right right ventricle it is again shunted by doctor sartusius okay and ultimately reaching the most oxygenated blood into the systemic circulation mainly the upper half of the body okay so placenta so there will be a different uh, uh, separate lecture regarding the placenta okay it facilitates the gas and nutrition nutrient exchange between the mother and fetus and blood do, the blood itself do not mix okay so mother blood and fetal blood they do not mix okay they just transfer the nutrients only okay so umbilical <clears throat> vein to portal circulation as we know the portal circulation because the liver is not that metabolically active okay that's why there is a shunt doctor venosus okay it shunts the liver to the inferior vena cava okay and for amen ovale yes for amen ovale this also shunt the more oxygenated blood directly to the left ventrium and left uh, left atrium ultimately going to the left ventricle and to the systemic circulation okay so more than 75% of the well oxygenated blood okay so almost 80 70 to 80% okay they goes to this route okay so the so it's seen here okay so the more oxygenated blood it goes via foramen ovale okay foramen ovale <coughs> to the left atrium and to the left ventricle so less than 10 to 20% it reaches the left ventricle and again sorry right ventricle and again from the right ventricle it is shunted by Doctor Sartusius, okay. So yes, Doctor Sartusius, the blood pumped from the right ventricle enters the pulmonary trunk, okay. And <clears throat> this most of this blood again it is shunted into the aortic arch through Doctor Sartusius, okay, through the Doctor Sartusius because we do not need more blood to the lung. They are solid. They are not metabolically active. Okay, they do not do exchange. So what happens at the birth? The foramen ovale closes shortly after birth because when the lung expanded, the left uh, <clears throat> the resistance of the pulmonary circulation it decreased. Okay, that's why, and there is increased pressure in the left in the, uh, left atrium as well as left ventricle, and it helps in closure of foramen uh, foramen ovale, which ultimately leads to fossa ovalis. Okay, and doctor artiosus again it closes after the birth because and becomes ligamentum artiosum. Bye.
third month. Okay, that is doctor's arteriosus. When uh, when there is decrease in oxygen content in the doctor's arteriosus, the prostaglandin they become active and they constrict. Okay, and finally it becomes fibrotic ligamentum arteriosum by three month. What about the doctor's venosus in the liver? It becomes ligamentum venosum. An umbilical artery, medial. Okay, remember it's the medial umbilical ligament. An umbilical vein, it becomes ligamentum teres in the liver. Okay, so what are the changes? <clears throat> yes, so after birth, the ligamentum arteriosum, doctor's arteriosus change into ligamentum arteriosum. Okay, foramen ovale, it change into fosta ovalis. Okay. And in liver, umbilical vein, it is changed into ligamentum teres. Okay, umbilical vein and umbilical artery, it's not lateral. Okay, it is medial umbilical ligament. Okay. क्लास में जाने हो लीव कर दो लीव कर दो आंसर वाले को कौन सा वाले को क्लास स्टार्ट हो यो माय ऑफिस में क्लास स्टार्ट हो यो लीव आने हो वो हाँ आमिलीव क